In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Let us call to mind our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God in the highest. And on our earth, peace to people of goodwill. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, Heavenly King, O oh God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, Only Begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who founded all the commands of your sacred law upon love of you and of our neighbor, grant that by keeping your precepts we may merit to attain eternal life. Through Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call him while he is near. Let the, the scoundrel forsake his way and the wicked his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord for mercy to our God who is generous and forgiving. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways. As high as the heavens are above the earth, so high are my ways above your ways, and my thoughts above your thoughts. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, Christ will be magnified in my body, whether by life or by death. For me, life is Christ, and death is gain. If I go on living in the flesh, that means fruitful labor for me. And I do not know which I shall choose. I am caught between the two. I long to depart this life and be with Christ, for that is far better. Yet that I remain in this flesh is more necessary for your benefit. Only conduct yourselves in a way worthy of the gospel of Christ. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Jesus told his disciples this parable. The kingdom of heaven is like a landowner who went out at dawn to hire laborers for his vineyard. After agreeing with them for the usual daily wage, he sent them into his vineyard. Going out about nine o'clock, the landowners saw others standing idle in the marketplace. And he said to them, you two go into my vineyard and I will give you what is just. So they went off. And he went out again at noon and around three o'clock and did likewise. Going out about five o'clock, the landowner found others standing around and said to them, Why do you stand here idle all day? They answered, Because no one has hired us. He said to them, You too go into my vineyard. When it was evening, the owner of the vineyard said to his foreman, Summon the laborers and give them their pay, beginning with the last and ending with the first. When those who had started about five o'clock came, each received the usual daily wage. So when the first came, they thought they would receive more. But each of them also got the usual wage. And on receiving it, they grumbled against the landowner, saying, These last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden and the heat. He said to one of them in reply, My friend, I am not cheating you. Did you not agree with me for the usual daily wage? Take what is yours and go. What if I wish to give this last one the same as you? Or am I not free to do as I wish with my own money? Are you envious because I am generous? Thus the last will be first, and the first will be last. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning. Good morning, Father. So a sparrow complained to Mother Nature, You gave beautiful 
colors to the peacock and lovely songs to the nightingale, but I am plain and unattractive. Why was I made to suffer? You were not made to suffer, Mother Nature said. You suffer because you made yourself the same foolish mistake as human beings. You compare yourself with others. Be yourself, for in that there is no comparison and no pain. Comparing ourselves with others or comparing what we have with what others have is not a good thing. Because when we compare, we either feel inferior and that's not good. Or we feel superior and that's not good either. Thus what it brings is only unnecessary suffering, making our life miserable. This is exactly what happened to the laborers who worked first in today's gospel parable. After agreeing to work for the usual daily wage, they were sent into the vineyard. For sure, they were happy to be given the opportunity to work and to earn a living. But their happiness easily vanished when they started to compare the wage they received with those who had worked last, especially those who had worked only for an hour. They started to grumble and complain, saying, these last ones worked only one hour, and you have made them equal to us, who bore the day's burden in the heat. Did those who have worked first receive the agreed wage? Yes. However, they believed that they deserved to receive more because they worked more. They worked for 12 hours, 11 hours more than those who came last. Again, they compared themselves with others, and that made them unhappy and dissatisfied. It is said that the secret of happiness is to count our blessings. In the Philippines, this happens many times in the neighborhood. We are happy and satisfied with our home until our neighbors, our neighbor builds a bigger mansion. Some of us laugh and enjoy our gadgets and accessories until our friends get the newest one. Indeed, comparing ourselves with others does not do any good because it almost always leads to envy and grumbling. Instead of being grateful for the blessings other people receive, instead of being happy with their accomplishments, instead of rejoicing with them in their success, we feel envious. We grumble in secret. Yes, most of the time, comparisons never have good results. They make us feel less blessed, less favored, less fortunate, less beautiful, less successful. In short, everything in us and about us seems reduced or diminished because of comparisons. Let us therefore pray that we may overcome envy because envy breeds anger and resentment. The antidote to envy is a deep sense of gratitude, being always grateful for who we are, being always thankful for everything we have. Let us rather celebrate in knowing that the Lord who loves and calls us to Himself gives His grace not according to what we earn, but rather according to His generosity and His grace is a free gift. Is it fair that God gives His grace to all? Fair is not the right word. God does not deal with us fairly, and that is a good thing. But for the sake of saying who gets the greater advantage, is it not fair enough to feel peaceful and enjoy the assurance of being employed sooner or earlier than to be accommodated at the risk? of the possibility of not being able to make it because it's already too late. Hence, we should be grateful nevertheless that God still gives us His grace without any second thought whatsoever, regardless of what we deserve for our sinfulness. I'd like to end by sharing with you a reflection of Andrew Murray about this matter. The humble man feels no envy or jealousy. 
He can praise God when others are preferred and blessed, are blessed before Him. He can bear to hear others praised when He is forgotten because He has received the Spirit of Jesus, who pleased not Himself, who sought not His own honor. Therefore, in putting on the Lord Jesus in us, He as well will put in our heart compassion, kindness, meekness, long-suffering, and humility. Let us now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in the one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, unsubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate with the Virgin Mary, and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. And I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now come to the Father who provides us with our needs and looks upon us with love and care. In deep supplication we say, Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. For Pope Francis and all who serve as leaders in the church, that inspired by the Holy Spirit, they continue to preach the gospel fearlessly in word and action. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us here, may we be a community of mutual care and friendship as we strive to live as Jesus taught. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who suffer from cruelty of others, that they may receive justice while learning to forgive those who have wronged them. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For those who are overwhelmed with excessive burdens of work, responsibility, and various difficulties, that others may reach out to assist them in helpful and concrete ways. We pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For all our faithful departed, that the purgative love of Jesus Christ will make them perfect in heaven as they look forward to the resurrection of the body. We pray to the Lord. O oh God, our Father, whose great love made manifest in your Son, Jesus, who invites us always to his love. Look kindly in our pleading and grant the deepest longings of our heart. Grant our prayers through Christ the Lord. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord God, of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands, will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. By the mystery of this water and wine, we come to share the divinity of Christ 
who humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the divine work of human hands. It will become for us our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. With humble spirit and contrite heart, may we be accepted by you, O Lord, and may our sacrifice in your sight this day be pleasing to you, Lord God. Wash me, O Lord, from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Let us pray. O Lord, who gained for yourself a people by adoption, through the one sacrifice offered once and for all, Bestow graciously on us, we pray, the gifts of unity and peace in your church. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just. Our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in goodness you created man, and when he was justly condemned, in mercy you redeemed him through Christ our Lord. Through him the angels praise your majesty, dominions adore, and the powers tremble before you. Heaven and the virtues of heaven and the blessed seraphim worship together with exultation. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in humble praise as we acclaim. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope, Edward our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Joseph, her most chaste house, with the Blessed Apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages. We may merit to be co heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father. Forever and ever. Thank you. 
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold Him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. May the body of Christ be received. Prayer to make a spiritual communion. My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you in my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually in my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Graciously raise up, O oh Lord, those who you renew with this sacrament, that we may come to possess your redemption, both in mystery and in the manner of our life. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. And may the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is celebrated. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.